So hello everyone it's your boy Devage in today's video we are going to dive into the cloth physics in Unreal Engine we will be creating a realistic flag with real time cloth simulation that reacts to wind and best part this same technique can be used for making clothes of your character or any cloth related stuffs in your game so let's get begin so if you already have your flag mesh then you can directly continue from Unreal Engine but i'm going to make a complete custom flag here so i will be starting from blender so what you have to do here simply press shift a and here under mesh you can select any type of mesh so just for a quick tutorial i will select a plane and let me scale it a bit or that will be perfect for us and by pressing tab we will go inside our edit mode and here what you have to do just simply select this buttons and merge it something like that and the next thing that I will do, I will select this part and I will extrude it in our Y axis. And after that, all you have to do is to simply select all by pressing A and by right clicking, you can subdivide it. And remember this subdivision is very important. Why? So as much subdivision you will have that much better quality you are going to get inside your cloth, but that will also increase load on our game. So make sure to keep the both thing in your mind. So I will subdivide it for a couple of times and I think that's perfect for me. So right now it's all said done. But just in case if you want to add some textures or you want to do the UV stuffs, what you can do, select your mesh, go inside the UV edit and here I will create a new texture and let's make it 4K. So what I will do, I will select this thing. I will multiply it by 4. So now it will become for 4K and let's name it as test mesh and I will click on this new image. So now we have a new image created that has this thing. So the next thing that you have to do is to simply go inside your shaders and here by clicking new you can get a new material and from its base color search for image texture and under this image texture select the texture one that we just created and here you can paint your mesh like this so there you can see we got this thing you can paint with any color you want so let's see let's make it red something like that but before that we have to unwrap our uvs so what i will do I will come back to my UV editing and by selecting all so just simply press A in your keyboard and press U and there you will find smart UV project so click on this and inside this island margin make it something like 0 0.001 and I think that's it and press OK so now you will find that we have a proper UV unwrap but this is not the accurate way to do UV unwrap but just because a quick tutorial I am doing it this way and it's not a blender tutorial that's why as you can see right now it's in the very corner so just to fix this thing what I will do I will press A here and then I will press G and I want to move this guy in our Y axis. So I'll press Y and now I can move, uh, not Y, I think it's uh, X. Now we can move this guy in the between and I think, yeah, we are all set done. And now come to our texture paint again and now we can paint it. Let's suppose I don't want to paint this normal colors. I want an image from my gallery to be pasted here or to use it here. So what I will do, I will simply go to this last option called textures. And by clicking this new, I can get a new texture. So from here, I will simply press on this open. And from here, I can get any texture that I want. I will use this logo. And now I will go back to my this tools button. And here, all you have to do is to simply go inside your textures. And from here, just uh, click on this guy and you will find the texture or the image that we just added. And here, you have to change this to a stencil why because if I will paint it in the view mode you can see this is what we are getting but we don't want it like this so I will switch it from view plane to our stencil mode and now if you will right click then you will be able to move this guy so let's zoom in so I will adjust it the way I want and now we can paint it and once you are done you can simply remove it and there you will find this is what we have now back to our layout mode and in the layout mode you will find that there is nothing why because right now we are in our shade mode uh, more like a object mode or whatever you say so if I will go to my this this is my material mode so, so there you can see this is how it's looking like and you can also find that we have some grayish color just because the image was not transparent that's why it's here but if you will use a proper image and proper transparent image then it will be a lot more clear to you and now the last step that we have to do before importing it simply press ctrl a and say apply rotation and scale and yeah we are all set done now we have to export it make sure your object is selected go to your files export fbx and select your desired location and from here just set the path mode to copy and for this path mode just turn on this to get this texture keep the batch mode as off and for the limits so make sure to select the selected objects only and here just turn off the bake animation and under armature turn off the add leafy bones now rename it so let's rename it as a tube and export it now we are all set done with our blender so one more thing i exported it as a static mesh but ultimately we need a skeletal mesh but inside our unreal engine we can convert the 
static mesh into a skeletal mesh so we don't have any problem with that now come to your unreal engine so here what i will do i will simply drag and drop the file that we just exported which is our tweet fba and now you will find that we have a proper texture and a material so yeah it's looking absolutely fine oh it says some issue with the material but believe me there is no issue with the material now open your skeletal mesh and here after opening what you have to do simply select this and right click and by right clicking you will find this option create clothing data from selection so create a one and by selecting again just apply that clothing data one that we just created so now it's applied but you will find there is nothing to do with it so what you have to do go to the windows and from here you can just turn on this clothing properties and by selecting this and on going on the stop activate cloth painting so once you will do this then they will find we have this all this all vertices and faces that we have to paint to tell our this guy which part will be controlled by the engine physics and which part will be the static one so what you have to do simply go here and under this paint value it will be 50 in your case or something i don't know what it will be but all you have to do is to increase it to the max value and you can play with the radius so simply paint it and all those part which will be non-pink that will be the part that will be controlled by the engine cloth physics so let me reduce the size so that i can paint on this part so only that much part will be controlled by the engine physics and that will be the static one so now i will deactivate it and there you will find this is how it's looking and why it's looking like this because it's going inside of a plane so if I will bring it in our map, then it will look better. So let me do one thing. I will simply bring it here. You will find nothing is happening. But if I will just simulate, then you will find that it's working absolutely fine. You can see how much beautiful it is. Let me just remove this. You can see it's working absolutely fine. And as I told you, the part which we are not painting, it will be static like this. And but in your case, this will be not go like this, like it will not float like this. In my scene, it's floating like this. Why? Because I have some of the stuffs here. Let me show what do I have. Let me just uh, exit this. Then there you will find I have this wind directional source and what this wind directional source actually do. So if you want that, all you have to do is to search for the wind directional force and you can simply drag and drop it inside your scene. And after dragging and dropping it, you can play with its value. Like if you want to increase the speed. So right now the speed is very less, but I can play with the speed. I can reduce it. I can increase it. You can increase the strength on this. So that's enough for this video. If you have any query related to this, feel free to ask me in the comment section and you can join our Discord server for more updates and you can also support us on Patreon. Have a nice day. Bye bye.